Hey, this is Brian Williams, and you are watching the 13th Wolfman. Hello! Hey, everybody, I'm the 13th Wolfman. You know who I have with me today? I have Brian K. Williams. He's back. He did Harvest Lake, and now he's done Space Waves from Outer Space. Welcome back to Sit Down, Brian. Thanks for having me. Yeah, man. So Space Babes from Outer Space. Let's get into this. Where did the where the idea come from? Um, back when I was uh, working on Time to Kill, uh, I don't remember exactly when or why, but uh, just the title Space Babes from Outer Space popped in my head and it made me laugh. And uh, I was like, man, I, said, I need to put not forget that, put that somewhere and come back to it at a later date. And uh, that's what I did. I made made time to kill and uh, got involved with some other people. Did a few other films and then made a comedy, a, a sex comedy. And I, I Space Bay went through several different transitions throughout the years of different styles. Uh, at one point, it was going to be like a Kentucky Fried movie uh, hmm. sketch sketch comedy kind of film, and. Uh, the, the time just never was right. I didn't feel like I was ready to take on it. It was a much bigger movie, a lot more people, a lot more just everything. And uh, then it just seemed like the time was right. So Scott and I got together and bounced a few different ideas off one another and came up with a pretty solid uh, normal narrative story uh, involving this space base from outer space and uh, wrote the script and jumped right into it. Yeah, now you and I were talking before the show started that you know this with this, this comes from the echelon of watching stuff like Up All Night and uh, and, and uh, USA and you know the sex comedies of the '80s. Yeah, very much so. That's that's what I grew up watching. I love horror, but I I love comedy possibly just as much, but specifically the comedies of the '80s in particular are what I really enjoy. Uh, yeah, there there were quite a few of them, you know, at, up the creek and Hots and the Squeeze play, you know, stuff oh, like yeah. that. I liked a lot yeah. of the a lot of the Canuck exploitation too, like uh, Joysticks, for example. I I love that film and uh, Screwballs is a favorite of mine, which was shot up in Canada, and uh, just a lot of those, just but, ludicrous almost, you know. Yeah, but this also has, and I, I said this to you then, this also has a very Corman feel to it. I yeah. mean, Roger Corman was very famous for like, hey, no matter what you do, make sure there's at least three nude scenes in every movie. You know? <laughs> yeah, I, I, that's kind of my mentality, too. I, I really look up to Roger Corman and... A lot of the a lot of the people that you know have came about through Corman, like Wynorski, you know, for example, and yeah. just the they did that because it works, in my opinion. At least it worked for me and people like me that are a fan of that style of film. So thank you. I guess that's what I'm saying. <laughs> I appreciate that. I I definitely look up to those guys, and they were a huge influence on me growing up. I'm a I'm yeah I'm a huge Corman fan. I mean. And you're right. Wynorski is just one name that came out of the Corman factory. There's a lot of other names that came out of the Corman factory that became mainstream directors and actors, you know, Ron Howard, Martin Scorsese, James Cameron, Francis Ford Coppola. That, that's just, you know, four. But we know that there's a ton more. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. But, yeah, so so you get to work with uh, the, the beautiful Ellie Church again because, well, you're married to her. <laughs> but, well you know it's uh i felt when i first started out i was like you know i don't want to make all my all, i don't want to put ellie in all the stuff that i'm a part of because you know i don't it, i didn't want it to be like a rob zombie sherry moon type of situation but the problem is she's so damn good that she just there just keeps being parts that are perfect for her and she's despite our relationship it wouldn't be any different honestly I'd, I'd still be her biggest fan and she's uh she's just amazing she brings such an energy and excitement and she's so helpful behind the scenes there's so much that she does uh just 
from her being married to a writer, director, filmmaker, you know, she will help with wardrobe and everything. So yeah, I'm very blessed to have her so close and being willing to be in our films. But the difference between Sherry Moon Zombie and Ellie Church is that she's not just in your films. Right. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I I mean, without no, Rob a, Zombie, Sherry doesn't a, have a career. Yeah, she's Ellie's a hot commodity. She she gets offers for work all the time, but she's also very picky. She's got a a, a name and a brand of herself that she to, you know, be able to upkeep. So she's not really interested necessarily in being a working actress in the sense of just taking anything that's offered to her. She's very selective about what she does and she's uh, good for her because like I said, she is good and she's able to uh, build up a, uh, a catalog of films that she's been in that are just getting better and better in my opinion. And she's getting better and better. Yeah. So now, what was it? I mean, what was it look working? What was it like working with the other two girls? I mean, well, I knew I knew Alice uh, Winkler because uh, we she was Bunny Girl in Plank Face, so I had worked with her before and knew what to expect with her. And uh, Allison Mayer, I was not as familiar with. I never worked with her, but she had just uh, previously, not too long ago, worked with Ellie on Frankenstein Creative Bikers, and I got to meet her through that production, and just loved, like, fell in love with her honestly like immediately just every everything about her her look her her professionalism her uh commitment to the craft and just similar to ellie she's done a lot of stuff behind the scenes and a lot of work as well living down in atlanta on various film sets so very lucky to have all not just the three leads either but brian uh papadrea and uh, there's there's a ton of people in this cast and every single person was very dedicated and prepared and made it not nearly as difficult as it should have been. Well, we do have the trailer for uh, Space Base from Outer Space. We have the family-friendly version. Would you like to introduce it? Uh, sure. Uh, this is our family-friendly version, as you call it, trailer <laughs> for Space Base from Outer Space. Still may not be quite safe for work, but it's close enough. Depends on where you work, but... Uh, this is I, I'm, I'm happy with how the trailer turned out both both of our trailers because I think they really give a an honest true expectation to the audience of what to get out of this film roll it billions of light years away a soft pink round supple spaceship was quietly floating through the cosmos when suddenly... Computer! It's another scrote. Well, that really puts a wrinkle in our plans. Gloss up, babes. It's time to play ball. And play ball they did. They, of course, being... The Space Babes from Outer Space. The scrotes were right on their tail. Hope they enjoyed the view. And who could blame them? Hold on to your hooters, babe. Things might get a little silly. So, hooters were held, and silliness was achieved. Forced to land on the alien planet of Earth, these three babes know a thing or two about heavenly bodies. But it took an Earth boy named Charlie. My name's Charlie. To teach them about love. Love. Most people down here don't even understand it. But the babes are fast learners and got what it takes. You too. You're hired. No matter how hard or long. Or short. The journey. Sexual energy is what these babes need. And we all got wieners. Wieners. To refuel their ship and get back home. To the ship fun! <laughs> We are here for your boners, your dicks, your cocks, your rods. Now, Charlie, please take us to your wieners. And that's a trailer for Space Space from Outer Space. 
I, I said it before, man. I saw the trailer for this. I really love this. I, I like your movies. There's a, there's a funness. There's a, a nice fun factor to most of the films that you make. You know, I mean, some of them are a little more serious than others, but there's you could just see that, like Harvest Lake. Harvest Lake was weird as hell, but I loved it. <laughs> I, I really did. There, there's like one scene in there that I don't want to talk about because I don't. I want people to see. I mean, for the people that haven't seen Harvest Lake, I want them to see it. Don't know what I'm talking about. <laughs> well, thank you. Yeah, we we try. I mean, I don't know. This is our job. You know, we're we're full time filmmakers. That's what we do. And if you if we didn't love it and we couldn't have fun throughout the process, we wouldn't do it. So. I guess maybe, you know, the fun that we have in the through the process of bringing the film to life, hopefully is coming through in the final product and people are able to enjoy that and see the fun that we do have. So the last time you were on, you guys were getting ready to have like an auction where you're going to auction off some stuff from Harvest Lake. Okay, yeah. Mm -hmm. how, how, if you don't want me asking, how did that go? It, it went well. Uh, actually, a third of the budget... For Plank Face came from those auctions, so yeah, uh, that's kind of that's kind of our our way of producing films in this environment. It's a, we try it's to kinda... take rather than rather than saying, "Hey, we want to make this movie, give us a whole bunch of money, and we'll get it to you," you know, in a year or so. We like to be able to take hopefully the success from the previous movie. And take a little bit of that and put it towards the next film so that we can come to our audience and say, hey, here's a film that's already pretty much done. We just need a little bit of help to get the, you know, the the discs replicated and the merchandise, you know, made up and sent out and everything. And if you all like it, hopefully make enough to be able to get a good head start in the next film. And things like the pre-sales, the auctions, just buying stuff, you know. All the stuff we have on our store is what helps us to be able to continue. And the nice thing is, is that with the auctions, in a way, you're, I mean, you're asking them to invest in the movie, but you're also giving back because one of the big things that was up for auction for that was uh, uh, the bikinis. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, so yeah, yeah, and so, they did well. I don't remember how, I don't remember exactly the dollar amount that they got, but yeah, we they. We definitely have a, a nice, solid fan base that is willing to support us and, you know, bid on auctions and things of that nature that we do to help us to be able to continue. Yeah, and like I said, I, I like Harvest Lake. Um, I'm looking forward to seeing Space Waves, Space Waves from Outer Space. I haven't seen Plank Face yet, sorry, but there's just so many hours in the day to watch movies. You know. Unders oh yeah, totally. I understand that. I I got a I got a pile to catch up on myself. <laughs> yeah. What 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 what's the the top five on that pile? Oh man, uh, beyond the valley, uh, beyond the valley of belief, which was uh, Rock Bottom Videos' uh, most recent film. Uh, Brian Poppendre, who's in Space Babes, he, it's one of his films. Uh, I got picked last week from Horror Hound. That's one I need to. I'd still need to watch. Uh, and then just a lot. Uh, John Wick. I still haven't seen that, and a friend of mine let me borrow it to check out. I gotta see that one. Uh, what else? I can't remember off the top of my head, but uh, v Vanishing Point. Um, I've seen it, but I got the Blu-ray recently and uh, at Walmart. So you know, just stuff like that. Love Vanishing Point. Yeah, that's great. Did you ever see? Did you ever see the remake? No, I, I heard it wasn't quite as good, but. Uh, the closest I saw to the remake was Death Proof. <laughs> ah. Which, so, Death Proof, uh, I love that film. So it was, uh, I definitely wanted to pick up the Blu ray of Vanishing Point since it was such a big influence on that one. Yeah. The remake had uh, Viggo Mortensen, Jason Priestley, and uh, at the time, Jason Priestley's girlfriend, Christina Lease. Okay. You know, it wasn't bad. Again, like, like everyone else says, you know, the Barry, you know, the Barry Newman version, you know, is 100% better. Yeah. You know. I Yeah, I, I find that to be the case. Well, I think most people do, you know, more often than not, the original is generally better than the remakes. There there are those few exceptions. Yeah, you know? yeah, I agree. But uh, John Wick, 
I've now I, I've seen the first one, which just if you haven't, if that's the one you're talking about, dude, yeah, it's a must see. That that movie is crazy. I wasn't quite sure what to think about it because I'd heard so many good things about it. I'm like, I'm I can take or leave Keanu Reeves, you know? Yeah, he's made some good movies, but not everything he's made has been good, you know. So I saw I this. Think, and I, yeah, go ahead. I, I think my favorite, uh, actually, from it's an uncredited role in Freaked. He plays the the werewolf like dog the, boy. Yep. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. With so I, with with what's his name is with uh, Alex Winter is Alex as Winter. The, yeah. As as like the the guy with like half a half a gremlin looking yeah, face and right. <laughs> you know, and the other half is human. Yeah. yeah. I love I love that movie. That is such a weird movie. I mean, it, I mean, and no one talks about it. The only no, people no. that talk about it are people our age. You yeah, because it's uh, Kevin from uh, the Dorkening. It's one of his favorite movies. You know, um, but yeah, I I could see that. I liked a lot. I like like the River's Edge. If you've ever seen that, I haven't seen that one. That that's like his first one of his very first movies. It came out like 1986. Oh, nice. You know, before Keanu Reeves was Keanu Reeves. You know, dude. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but. Yeah, so uh, you got to. I mean, if you got a copy of it, watch John Wick. Yeah, I, yeah, be, I, I do. You'll you'll be uh, surprised actually how good that movie really is. Cool. So let's uh let's introduce the trailer for Harvest Lake. All right, Harvest Lake. Uh, that was Bandit Motion Pictures' first film, first film that Scott and I officially got together and co-produced and made together, and. Uh, we didn't know what people were going to think of it. We had no idea. It was weird. It's very different, and we just kind of went with our gut and did what we wanted to do and thought, well, we'll see what people think, and it's done surprisingly well. Uh, we're, it's been out just over a year, and it is, uh, as of a few minutes ago, it's like four copies shy of selling out and being out of print. So check it out and hope you like it. That's Harvest Lake. Like I said, it's that's a it's a strange movie. It's kind of has it kind of has a Twilight Zone kind of feel to it, you know, in a way. At least for me, it did. Just because you're not quite sure what path they're on at the very beginning of the movie, you know. Yeah, it's been it, it's it's been uh, compared a lot to uh, Shivers, and I've actually never seen Shivers, <laughs> and so I that's another one on my list I need to watch because I'm curious, but. Uh, it's we kind of had like a invasion of the body snatchers, you know, kind of vibe going through it, and that too, yeah. Just really wanted to, really wanted to kind of turn sex into something scary and unfamiliar. And and you did it, you know, and you did it well. I mean, because there 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 are so many ways that when you when you take that kind of idea, it could not come out good. Yeah, you know, so it's the nice thing about you. That's how you you actually. I mean, I I interviewed quite a few you know, uh, 
you know, directors and some people, I don't know if they take it as serious as you do, you know, you're, you're in the movie making. Well, we have to, like I said, I mean, it's our, it's our full-time job. Scott and I live right down the road from one another and we communicate daily about what's, you know, what's going on, where we're at in different stages of production or in pre-sales or different campaigns, what we're going to do next. We, we are, we, we have to do that way because we're doing everything on a shoestring budget and barely, barely making it. I mean, like below minimum wage, poverty level making it. And if we weren't as serious as we are about it and we didn't put as much thought and concentration into what we're doing and where we're going next, I, we wouldn't be able to make it at all. And I, I think hopefully that's maybe something that some of our friends and fans that do support us on the regular basis are able to take note of that, you know, these guys aren't fucking around, you know, we're, we're in it to win it and we just want to hopefully continue to be able to keep going and get better and better. So if you were to give some advice to upcoming filmmakers, that would be it. Just basically, you know, get in, get into it, but be as serious about it as you can. Well, usually when people come to me and ask for advice, I say run away because it's, 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 I don't want to sound like Debbie Downer, but I mean, it's, it's a lone, it's a lonely life. It's very topsy turvy up and down. You can go from feeling on top of the world to, down the dumps and back again several times a week and i do just because it's so tight every, like every single thing we do is just so barely barely there and any if we didn't love it we wouldn't do it i guess is what i'm saying so i don't want to discourage people from doing it but i would say if you don't ask it don't do it if you don't if you have a backup plan like oh well if this doesn't work i'll do this don't do it but if you don't know what else you could do with your life other than make films, then by all means do it and do it well. Yeah. Cause the last time you were on, the last time you were on was when a uh, harvest lake was coming out. And I think it was at that point you said that it was, I, it was, I, I found if I'm remembering this right, this was like around the time you said we finally got into it full, you know, we're, we're, we're both, full feet into it all the way with we don't have any backup jobs anymore yeah yeah and that was like i said just a little over a year ago and we've been able to do harvest lake plank face and now space babes back to back to back pretty much and we already have two films in the plans to hopefully uh be able to do still yet this year to have two more films on top of space babes come out still this year and it's crazy and it's kind of stupid, but again, the where the where we are right now, where physical media is at right now, where piracy is at right now, where distribution deals are at right now, and the way that we're trying to circumvent all of those issues and all those problems and just be direct from us to our fans, it's it's just grassroots and it's growing and I think it will hopefully continue to grow if we're able to. But for the time being it's so small. And building at a not quite fast enough rate that we have to put out this many films a year just to be able to survive. I'd love to slow down. I'd love to do one or two films a year and uh, you know not have to worry about it. And hopefully that day will come because what what that does is not necessarily slow down and kick my feet up and do nothing, but it allows us to be able to put a little bit more love and care into each film get a little bit more of a budget for each film, get better people working with us and then hopefully produce better content. You know, I mean, it's, it's like any kind of business in life and you have to treat it that way if you want to do it for a living. Oh yeah. No, I, I, I think that'd be great. I mean, I, I do love the fact that you guys put out two to three movies a year, but if you want, if you could get to the point where you're just doing one or two, that would, you know, that'd be great too, because like you said, you get to, you get to nurture the film a little bit more, you know, yeah. you're not rushed. Right. Yeah. And that's really when, when the way that we're doing it with Scott and I writing, directing, shooting, editing, and scoring in cases now, time is all we need, you know, time, just more time to be able to do more of the work, to be able to do a shoot and 
three weeks instead of two weeks. Or, I mean, and sometimes it's as simple as just to be able to be on set for four more hours that day instead of having to set the next day because you got an actor that you're paying a day rate that's got to get back to where they're from. And, you know, it's just right. time is time is money in all cases, but specifically in filmmaking, just having more time costs more money, but that would definitely help to make a better film. So let's go back to Space Babes from Outer Space for a second. Uh, while making this movie, where did you have? Did you find anything? Because we were talking about you making movies. Um, any stuff that was difficult to do? I mean, like, what was the hardest thing about making that movie? Um, the hardest thing for me specifically was just directing it. Uh, I hadn't directed a film since Time to Kill. Uh, other than I did a short film after Time to Kill and a couple of music videos, but I hadn't directed a feature film since Time to Kill. I produced and shot and edited and stuff, you know, with, with Scott and Harvest Lake and Plain Face, but Space Babes was a return for me to go back to uh, in the director's chair. And I had, uh, I kind of took some time off from directing on purpose because what got me into filmmaking in the first place was I'm, I was a photographer for years and I loved the camera and I loved being behind the camera. And I really wanted to, when I did Time to Kill, I shot it and directed it and edited it and produced it up all pretty much all of it myself and I hated it because it's just too many hats to wear and when I was trying when I was directing a scene in Time to Kill I was shooting at the same time and it's my mind would always stray more to the side of the shot versus the performances so I didn't really get to direct so being able to have Scott behind the camera on Space Babes and have me just directing it at first was very difficult because I kept wanting to just grab the camera because that's what I'm used to and that's what I love. But then, you know, I knew I was able to trust Scott because Scott knows what he's doing as well. And he was, uh, he was using all my equipment. So I knew, you know, I knew the equipment intimately and knew what he was doing. And we, we went over and we did a shot list for the entire film together. And he really understood my vision of what I wanted and how I want to look. So I, once I was able to get over that, it took me about a day or so and just put all my trust in him behind the camera and solely focus on directing, then it started to get fun. But we had a couple of scenes, a couple of days where we shot in a local strip club and we had, I think over 35 to 40 different actors in these scenes. And we are like shoestring, low, low budget filmmakers. So we don't have a script supervisor. We don't have uh, an AD. We don't have, you know, in, anything. We've got Scott running camera, me directing, one person doing effects, and a guy with a boom pole doing sound. That's it. So trying to corral all of those people in a loud, rowdy environment with so much, so many sight gags and different things going on at the same time. And we got puppets and we got like things, <laughs> fluid shooting all over the place and all this crazy stuff going on. It was, it was a little overwhelming, to say the least. I was scared to death of those two particular days. But uh, like I had mentioned earlier, everyone was so professional and prepared and on board and willing to help this vision come together that it was not nearly as bad as it could have been. That's definitely a good thing. But, man, that, that sounds, like a, sounds like a good time. It's, I mean, I, you say you only had, you had the guy holding the boom. And I remember Kevin Smith saying when Clerks was being made that they were like, whoever was standing around, whoever wasn't going to be on set was the person holding the boom. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, that's, that's, that's independent filmmaking, man. I mean, everybody's got to pitch in. Allison, when she was done, when she wrapped and we shot her out because she was from Atlanta and she had to get back home, she stayed an extra day, not paid, just to be there to script supervise for us on one of the final days of shooting. And I mean, not only is that a testament to her and the the things I mentioned about her previously, but you know it's also just a testament to the group that we have, the core group of people that we have on these films. We're it's like a family, it's like a family business, and people, good people, I should say, hopefully will notice that and latch on and want to become a part of it as well. So it's uh you know all hands on deck every day is how it is. <laughs> It really comes across in your movies too. You could tell that these movies are made with um, a lot of care and a lot of love. So thank you. 
you know. Well, uh, at the, you know, we got one more trailer we could introduce. You know what it sure. is. Uh, let's see. What Plank Face? Is that what we're yeah. ready for? Plank Face was our most recent film, and we, I don't think any of our three films have much in common at all other than who's making them and a few people that are in them. They're all vastly different, and that's something that we are hoping to, a trend we're hoping to continue. I think it's fun to give people something they're not expecting. And Plank Face is definitely in that vein. It's very dark and gritty and weird and disgusting and has a lot of heart and uh, emotion in it as well. And considering that the majority of the cast is uh, acting an entire film with no English dialogue whatsoever, and two of them behind a mask, uh, really, really shows that those actors really knew what they were doing and they were on board from the beginning and uh i love plank face and it's it's hard for me to say you know if i which one i like better because i love all of them in different ways but plank face is definitely one that i'm very proud of and very happy that we were able to get done let's roll the trailer I need an answer here, Max. Shh. As much as you might hate me bringing it up, I can't help it. You know how you are. And you can't just change overnight. The things you said, the way you acted, sometimes I don't know who you are anymore. as i say it all the time that is that's the trailer that's plank face so brian you just you before we went to the trailer you uh you touched on the fact that you like making all movies that are totally different than one another but have you ever thought about doing a trilogy maybe not one that maybe not one that interconnects you know all the all the way but kind of, kind of some kevin smith or Simon Wright type of thing where there's kind of a trilogy there where where it's more of a universe rather than a rather than a sequel. We've talked about pretty much anything and everything that you could even conceive. I mean, we're always all over the place with what we want to do and where we want to go next. Uh, we we had a, we had an idea for Plank Face uh, to be a three part story, and the scripts aren't written, but we had the ideas. But uh, just have to kind of see Plank Face is still a baby. I mean, it's only been out around six months, and it's still gaining a lot of traction every day. More and more people are hearing about it. And uh, we're not too terribly far from being sold out of its first printing on Blu-ray as well in just six months. So it's uh, it's definitely a possibility, but you know, I, we don't want to do anything that feels forced. We just want to – something that I think also maybe sets us apart is – we never, we never even think about going for the mainstream at all. It's just we kind of just make the kind of films that we want to see and we want to be, you know, associated with and hope for the best. <laughs> yeah. No, I, I was just, I, I watched Hatchet Two last night. Mm-hmm. And if you watch Hatchet Two, like in the towards the beginning of the movie, uh, Daniel Harris goes to visit uh, Tony Todd. Mm-hmm. And the TV's on in the background. Well, the, there's an interview being conducted. It's from the girl that was in the movie Frozen. 
Okay, yeah. Well, we do little and, Easter eggs like that. Like, and, and, yeah, I was thinking that's kind of cool because they both share the same universe. Yeah, you know, like so. in Harvest Lake, for example, uh, the the sex scene between Jason Crow and uh, Kevin Roach. Kevin has a headless condom that he opens up and uses in in space space from outer space. One of the one of the uh, aliens, the Scrotes in his space has a uh, time to kill poster hanging up in the background. So, you know, it's fun to do stuff like that when it works. But as far as, you know, like a direct, I'm personally not a fan of how it seems like everything today is tied into some other universe. And right. I think it, and I've never been nothing against them. I've just never been a fan of like the modern comic book film either. And it seems like my friends that are, and my son, I have a 14 year old son who is obsessed with the flash. Actually, he'd love your shirt. But he, he, it's like they'll go, they'll go watch a movie, and I'll come home and you know say, oh, how was the movie? And people will talk about the the stinger or the last five minutes of the movie that sets up for some other movie, and it makes me feel like okay, so you watched a really long commercial for the next movie, and that's how it feels to me. And it's just that's not why I watch movies, and I don't want no, to make that's, movies no, for that. that's not why I watch movies either. But I get what you're saying. Yeah, yeah, no, I I I just saw the movie Life over the weekend and. There kind of is a, it could be a setup for another film, but I mean, I don't need that. I, yeah. I loved everything else about the movie that was there. So I just think we need more original content, period, honestly. I mean, remakes, I'm not going to bitch about remakes or redos or sequels. They all have their, their place, you know, but for me personally, I would just like to see more original content, more new characters, new stories, new worlds, new people. So I'm not, you know, I'm not going to sit here and say we'll never do anything like that because who knows, but um, not anything in particular that we have planned necessarily at all. Okay. Well, Brian, uh, we got to set up for the live show, so I want to thank right. you for coming on. If Thanks people for are looking me. for you, where can they find you on the internet? Right now, where I live is igg.me slash at slash space babes. That's where you pre-order the movie, and like I said several times, we live and die by things like this pre-order. This pre-order will determine what we get to do going forward. This this pre-order will determine if we're done making movies or if we're moving on to the next one, and I don't want to quit because I know Scott and I both have a lot of stories we want to tell. So Space Babes is what's what it is right now. Uh, we're on Facebook. Uh, we're on Twitter. There's not a whole lot of other things out there that I'm aware of called Space Babes from Outer Space, so it's pretty easy to find. Right. But uh, I'm also on Twitter at Not That News Guy, and yeah. <laughs> and I am on Facebook as Brian K. Williams, and mostly harmlesspictures.com is where you can go to order Plank Face Blu-rays or DVDs, T-shirts, trading cards, all that good stuff. There you go. Support independent film. So exactly. Support independent film. I go out there. Do the, I've seen the trailer. You'll be able to watch the trailer when this is up. Check out the trailer for Space Base from Outer Space. Looks like a good movie. Pre-order it if you want to, you know, or wait for it to come out and then, then buy it, you know. But no pre-order. Support. Okay. <laughs> do, do, pre-order. do what Brian's. No, yeah, Brian says, I, I just work here. <laughs> not, yeah, no. not, only, not only does the pre-order help us greatly, but when you pre-order, you get uh, the tr- trading cards for free. You get all three Space Babes to sign it for free. You get uh, – we have T-shirts that are campaign exclusives, a trading card set that's campaign exclusive, and we're less than $2,000 away from every single pre-ordered disc becoming a two-disc set that oh. will only only be available in the pre-order. If you order it afterwards, you do not get that second disc. And that second disc is going to have Choose Your Own Adventure strip teases. It's going to have cooking with strippers. And it's going to have tons of just not like uh, your chip typical bonus features. There's going to be things that are fun and people are going to really have a lot of good times with. Okay, well then, don't listen to what I said before. Pre-order Space Waves from Outer Space. Because <laughs> it sounds like you're getting a lot of goodies. So for Brian K. Williams, I'm the 13th Wolf Man, and of course, I'm on the prowl. <laughs>